Let's learn about trig substitution, but I'm going to show you a much easier way. We're going to be labeling right triangles instead of using these traditional formulas. Here's how we start. All of these trig subs have a square root of either a sum or difference of squares. This is all rooted in the Pythagorean theorem. So s squared, a side squared, plus the other side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So if I've got the square root of a sum, like we do here in number one, this represents our hypotenuse. Let me clean this all up a little bit. And let's go ahead and start labeling this first triangle. So if this is equal to my hypotenuse, I know that my other two values are both sides. So one of my sides has length x and the other side has length a. Let's label each of these to be consistent with those trig sub formulas. If I've got an x, I'm going to put it on the vertical leg. And if I've got a constant, which is what a represents, that's going to go on my horizontal leg. So I've got the side x here, the side a here, and that leaves me with the square root of x squared plus a squared here. You could, of course, confirm that with the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's move on to our second type. So in our second type, I've got an x squared minus an a squared. I've got a difference of squares. Well, this tells me that this is not the hypotenuse. Instead, this is one of my sides. But x is going to represent my hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is equal to x. I'll go ahead and label it there. And I've got my other side is a. That side a is a constant. So that's going to go on the horizontal side. That vertical side is going to be the square root of that difference, x squared minus a squared. OK, so finally, I've got example number three. In this last one, I have another difference of squares inside that square root. So this square root is one of my sides to identify my hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the one that comes first. So my hypotenuse is a and that leaves me with this x as my other side. So my other side is equal to x. Let's go ahead and label this. So I've got a side x that's going to drop in right here. I've got a side here that's the square root of a squared minus x squared and then my hypotenuse was a. A. Let's look at some examples. In this first example, I've got that square root of 1 minus x squared, so I'm thinking it's going to be a trig sub. So let's go ahead and take that square root of 1 minus x squared and break it down. It's a difference, so I know that this square root is going to represent a side. 1 then is going to be my hypotenuse, and x is going to be my other side. As I put that together, I've got 1 as the hypotenuse. I've got a side x that's going to live on that vertical leg and then I've got the square root of 1 minus x squared as my horizontal leg. I'll go ahead and put theta right there in the lower corner. From here we can identify everything else that we need. Now that I've got my triangle defined, I'm going to go through and exchange everything that I've got in my integral in terms of theta. So that means that I've got to deal with the square root of 1 minus x squared. I need to also deal with this x cubed, and I need to deal with the dx. I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA to combine these. So SOHCAHTOA. And this just gives me a way of thinking through each of my trig functions. So I've got sine, cosine, and tangent. I'm going to take a look at the square root of 1 minus x squared first. In relation to theta, the square root of 1 minus x squared is on the adjacent side. That's what I want to solve for. I don't want to combine it in a trig function with x, but I do want to combine it in a trig function with 1. So I'm going to combine the adjacent and hypotenuse side, which is going to be my cosine. So I've got my first trig sub going. So I have cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1. I can much more simply write that the cosine of theta is equal to the 
the square root of 1 minus x squared. This is the first piece that I'm going to substitute in my integral. So number one is done. Number two, let's look for an x cubed. To get to the x cubed, I notice that I've got x here on the opposite side, and I want to combine it with that number one again, which is my hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is a sine function. So putting that together in a sine function, I've got the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is x. Hypotenuse is 1. So I've got that sine theta is equal to x. This isn't exactly what I wanted. I really want x cubed. So let's go ahead and go over here and just cube everything. So sine cubed of theta is equal to x cubed. That takes care of number two, but I've got one more substitution to do, and that is my dx. I can get to my dx by going right back to the sine theta equals x and taking its derivative. So if I take my derivative here, I get cosine theta d theta is equal to d x. So I've got everything in my integral replaced and I'm ready to put together my substitution. I've brought my new integral down because I'm ready to do my substitution. I can replace radical 1 minus x squared with my substitution number 1 here. I can replace the x cubed with substitution number 2 here. And then finally the dx with substitution number 3. So here's what this looks like in terms of theta. So x cubed is a sine cubed theta divided by the square root. The square root is a cosine theta times our dx, and our dx is right here, and that's a cosine theta d theta. It's going to work out really nicely for us, and I can go ahead and work through my trig integral. Notice that you can cancel a cosine theta. That's going to leave me with a sine cubed theta. So now I'm working through this trig integral. So I'm left with a sine cubed theta d theta. I need to break sine cubed down, so I've got a du and a u. Well, my options for du here that involve a sine would really just be a sine theta. It's cosine's derivative. So putting that together, I want to separate out a sine squared from that sine theta d theta. I'm going to think of that sine theta d theta as being part of my du, and I need u then to be cosine theta. So I'm going to continue to work with this using the Pythagorean identity. I know that cosine squared plus sine squared, that's a plus, is equal to 1. So that tells me that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So I'm able to replace that sine squared theta. This gives me the integral of, inside those parentheses, I'm replacing the sine squared theta with a 1 minus cosine squared theta. And on the outside here, I've got my sine theta d theta. Let's go ahead and formally do that u substitution. So I want u to be cosine theta. And that means that du is equal to negative sine theta d theta. So I really want to replace the sine theta d theta with a negative du. So dividing both sides by that negative sign, I've got my sine theta d theta. So we've got is equal to now in terms of u. So take a look at what I've done. I started with this integral in terms of x. I did a trig sub to get everything in terms of theta. Now I've got a u sub, but the u sub makes it super nice. So in my parentheses, I've got 1 minus cosine squared, but u is cosine. So that's 1 minus u squared. And then I'm going to replace my sine theta d theta with my du, with my negative du. Let's distribute that negative through as well. And I get the integral of negative 1 plus u squared, that's all in parentheses, du. Such a nice integral. 
Doing my power rule and applying this integral, the integral of negative one is u negative u, and the integral of u squared is u cubed divided by that new power three. So u cubed divided by three, and of course, plus a c. Now I've got an answer, but my answer is in terms of u right now. I really need my answer instead to be in terms of x. So that means I've got a little bit of work left. I need to take this and go from u back to theta and then theta back to x. So I need to start by replacing u in terms of theta. My u is right here. So I can go ahead and replace u in this equation in terms of theta using u equals cosine theta. So for this first substitution back to get in terms of theta, I've got negative u, but u is cosine theta plus u cubed divided by three, but u is cosine theta. So I get cosine cubed theta divided by three plus c. Now I've got to go back in terms of x, and I need to go all the way back to my trig substitution to get in terms of x. I'm going to go ahead and just redraw my triangle. You can also look back up to your work to see what you had. This was our triangle, and theta was here. I need cosine theta. So I just need to go to my triangle here and take cosine theta. I know that cosine soka toa is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I've got that my cosine of theta, so cosine of theta is the square root of one minus x squared all over one. It's really just the square root of one minus x squared. So taking our integral in terms of theta and doing this one last sort of reverse substitution, I can get back in terms of x. So I've got negative cosine theta, but cosine theta is the square root of one minus x squared. So square root of one minus x squared plus cosine cubed. That's gonna be the square root of one minus x squared all cubed. You could also write that as a three halves power, all divided by three plus a C, and we've got our answer. Take a look at this next video. It's gonna show you a trig substitution for a different form inside that radical. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much for watching.